Hi, uh, so let's uh, start the first step towards building the QT4 device creation for Raspberry Pi 4. What we'll do is we'll uh, download the source and then I'll show you how to modify the conf file and then we will uh, issue the bitbake command. So we'll go step by step. Hopefully this should make it uh, clear what are the steps involved. So if you follow me across, I think it should be easier for you. So for First, we'll create a folder. So I'll create a folder called QT for uh, device. And just change, go to that folder. And now we'll download the source by using the git command. So I already pasted the command as you can see. So we are cloning the repository uh, meta boot to QT from the QT's uh, git repository. So I'll clone that. So once we have done that, now what we want to do is we want to initialize this library for Raspberry Pi, which we can do that. So there is a file, uh, the script called as uh, pqt init, init build environment, and we will pass in the parameter Raspberry Pi 4. So this will initialize and create a build folder. Uh, if you have seen my previous videos related to Yocto, we were also doing a similar thing by creating a build folder. So we'll be doing the same thing here. So let's create that. Oops. So what are we missing here? It says, uh, it's that, okay. We are missing our init command here. So that's what we need to give. Let's do that again. Okay, so it's initializing. So it will download the source code and this will download the source code for Qt6. Qt6 embedded Linux. We will be building that version of the Qt6 libraries. It's going to take some time. I might just uh, skip this part in the video, but in case if you are able to hear it, then yeah. So it, it just it does takes around maybe few minutes, really three four minutes. It uh, goes on and does its stuff. Downloads all the source code from the Git repository, and once it has done this, then we are going to modify the conf file and make sure that it uh, the machine name is set correctly as well as the licenses are set correctly which i will show you just in a second once this has finished downloading so this process is i mean yeah this should be over soon okay it's downloading meta open embedded now so make sure to while this is going on i think we i can definitely uh, uh, and more that make sure to watch my previous videos related to Yocto, especially the first one, which shows you what are the prerequisites uh, required to install Yocto and other tools which are necessary for building this. Okay, so this is done. So all the downloading has finished. Let's look at the list of folders. So now what we are going to do is we are going to use the source command and the script setup environment.sh for creating a build directory for ourselves. So we'll say export machine equal to raspberry pi 4 and we'll run the source command in the setup script. Okay, so we are inside the build folder now. It has automatically took us inside that. There's a conf folder. And we'll have the familiar local.conf now. So if I open that, and I know it does. So let's see what it has. And what changes we need to make. So uh, this is going to be very crucial to avoid any kind of uh, build issues later on. I would suggest is just set the value to of BB number of threads to one. That's what I would do. Yes, set it to one. Uh, 
and same for this one as well set it to one parallel make one and number of threads is one if you are on a machine which has less than 32 gb or even 32 gb is not enough to build qt for device creation so make sure to do that otherwise you will be getting a lot of problems and a lot of errors and of course this also means that it's going to take probably maybe a day or two to build your embedded linux image for uh, which is qt for device creation image so that's the change which you want to make and the other change is so machine name you'll have to change it to raspberry pi 4 what you want and machine host name can be left as it is so rest of the stuff we can leave them as it is and other thing which we want to make sure that this goes into is is uh, we need to specify what edition of qt which we are going to use otherwise this is not going to build the image and i'll show you the image which i was able to successfully build my distribution against so just to save some time here okay, so here it is so these are the flags which you will need to provide these are the additional flags which are not going to be there in the default file so except fsl eula equal to one license flags whitelist equal to commercial and qt edition equal to open source make sure to specify this qt edition equal to open source the rest can remain as it is uh, just i'll go through the file just to make sure i'm not missing anything here because it is very crucial to have a proper config file in order for the build to go through if you don't have a proper config file the big big command will fail quite uh, later during the process and it will be very hard to track down the errors as well so this is what i have specified in my machine name uh, raspberry pi 64.conf so uh, you can do the same thing and i think for again for number of threads i've specified it to two here but in my case i was having problems so i made it one and it worked for me and again for parallel make also i specified it to one so once you have done all this once you have the correct conf file i'll try to upload this in my source code folder so you can use this if you want to the conf file just in case and if i close if i go back again to the terminal so if i go back here so all that is left now is to issue the bit bake command basically so if you just say bit bake uh, bqt uh, qt um, added qt6 image so i am making this build as of uh, october 2021 so i am using the qt6 image if you are watching this in future things might have changed by then but yeah i think the overall process should remain the same you download the source code you modify you make sure you have all the prerequisites uh, if you have not watched my previous video make sure to watch that it has all the necessary commands and whatever is required once you have done or downloaded all the prerequisites downloaded all the source modified the configuration file and finally you can issue the bit break command and if you press enter so it's let's see if it does something yeah finally it's loading the recipes I'm not going to show the full bit big command uh, running because it, uh, it took me about two days I think more than two days I think around two or three days to build the embedded Linux image yeah so I will uh, uh, show you once the process has finished 
I'll show you what is the image and uh, how it looks uh, when the Raspberry Pi boots up uh, with this embedded image. So I'll just uh, keep this thing on for just when it starts to parse and when it starts to actually build. I will hold the process then. So it is quite an involving process. Uh, you will have you will be facing lots of errors and lots of problems during this entire build But that is part and parcel of uh, building an embedded image So yeah, so if you face any errors, you'll have memory problems and you'll have Prerequisites not uh, not installed. Unfortunately, those can't be covered in this video You will have to do install yourself by using the apt get install uh, uh, Using the packet manager basically the package manager so just use that and install and download whatever if if you are missing some prerequisites because those were the errors which i was getting i did not have all the tools which were required and which i have to install them as well so go through that and once you are there and this should just go through successfully you should not have any problems as i will show you once this has finished so it takes a while and make sure that the in my case I'm uh, running this on a virtual machine and I had to allocate around uh, I think it was around 28 GB or something which was mm, not not adequate I should say so if you are running on a very fast device with a lot of RAM and a lot of memory to spare should not be a problem for you so in my case, I mean, I did not have an adequate build machine. So I faced a lot of problems because of that. Should be okay for you if you are running this on a faster machine. I think the laptops should uh, are not going to be enough for to build such kind of an image. So if you have a desktop machine, a beefy desktop machine, please make sure to use that. Unfortunately, I cannot provide the final embedded Linux image for on my source code area because I think uh, Qt prohibits from distributing that image but we can download the source and build it ourselves as uh, mentioned on websites really so it should not be a problem if you build it on your own but you cannot uh, distribute it as such so I will not distribute this embedded Linux image but I will uh, yeah so you can uh, build this yourself as you are seeing on the screen now so yeah it goes into the fetching mode it's downloading all the tasks it is downloading everything and i will just uh, take you to the next i'll show you the next stage where it has to where things have completed okay thanks see you soon bye